We'll begin your highly anticipated, regularly uh, scheduled programming in a minute. I wanted to take this opportunity to bring your attention the importance of Mug Club. You've all seen it. Uh, hand-etched, painted, girthy, as best as free. But in light of the four copyright claims on our Oscars stream and archive uh, that we received within 24 hours of each other this week, as well as being the subject of a national news story regarding Facebook's live video suppression algorithms, I want you to know that Mug Club has never been more necessary in our ability to fight back than today. Join up for less than 27 cents a day at louderworthcreditor.com slash Mug Club and make your voice heard. Also, it is my duty uh, to inform you that the episode you're about to see includes graphic half Asian litigious content not suitable for younger viewers and or put <laughs> viewer discretion is advised. Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther and Hopper. With Mug Club growing into the largest pay service subscription model on the internet, not only did Black O Mugscabar find himself on big tech's radar, but straight in the crosshairs of the SPLC. See, the SPLC are arbiters of what's determined hate speech and allowed on the platforms. And they decided that Black O had to go. Black O! That's what Jiski said I should be expecting you. What's up, Adam Mug Club? No LSA, PLSA. Ah, yes. First it's the mugs, then it's the bottle. Yeah, nothing safe. Okay. You want free speech, right, Mugs Kabar? I get you. Let me explain something to you, boy. Free speech leads to hate speech. Hate speech leads to bigotry. And bigotry, that leads to violence. We don't need your kind of violence on our platforms. Tus plataformas? Blacko, Blacko, let's stop with the games. YouTube, the SPLC, you know we're one and the same. My friend, you gotta understand that the First Amendment wasn't made for people like you. It was made for good people, fair people, people like me. This ain't complicated, Blacko. Free speech hurts people. I ain't never really cared about hurting people. I care about that. What do you wetbacks call it? Dineros? You gotta make a decision, buddy. What you fixing to do? You don't want me to squeegee your windshield? Are you sure? 
That's what that is. Uh, actually, I realize we actually have my half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, here. Oh, yeah. So I have to make sure that our wonderful sponsor, Walter, so you can see that's unloaded. Uh, it still does have to be facing you. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. <laughs> I think he's okay. Like, I don't know if we're happy about this or not practicing uh, firearm sure. safety. We're yeah. going to have James O'Keefe on the show oh, today. Ooh, nice. uh, question of the day Exciting. before we move on. Question this is a special day. episode. It's a legal update episode because, oh my God, it's been a week. Uh -huh. Damn straight. Uh, we'll get into all of the false DMCAs as well as the Facebook all of the recent deboosting of our videos, but my question to you is, which sin do you think is the most egregious? Are you tired most of the DMCAs on YouTube, Facebook's lack of transparency, or professors like Charles Hermes? Because someone getting sued, Larry! All I want to make above. sure <laughs> that we understand here. All of the above. We, be on, we are beyond the point of playing nicely. Hey, we have mm -hmm. Pentelis Comedy here. How are you, sir? I'm very good. I'm happy to be here. You're aiming to get over 1,000 YouTube uh, yeah. subscribers. It's Pentelis Comedy, right? That's it. That'll be great. And uh, he writes for the show. Actually, he's one of the few writers we have help, uh, helps us behind the yeah. scenes. Uh, part time. Nice. He's brilliant. Greek uh, from Montreal. Used to hate the sound of this kind of accent. Now it makes me homesick. Quarter black carrot. Show me your hood pass. What's up? Terrible Gerald Morgan Jr. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, sir. How are you? One of the day is. One of the day is more like Quarter Valet. Quarter mm. Valet. It's an accent aigu. Is he pronouncing that correctly, Pantelis? Aigu. Yeah. Aigu. Yeah, aigu. it's close enough. It's correct. It's valet. It's valet. Valet. And uh, Tattoos, I don't know. we have my half Asian lawyer, uh, Bill Richmond, here. People are really excited for you to be here. Hi, friends. What I always find funny <laughs> is that before, he's always completely off the wall, and then he tries to get oh, yeah. professional once he, we go live. He's like, I it's can't. real buttoned up right as the show starts. Well, before we move so. into all of the legal updates and the legal, the potential legal actions, mm. uh, our hashtag <laughs> crowd or anti Oscars party, the costume winner was Chase. Huckle? Is that yeah. how it's pronounced? Chase Huckle. Yeah. Uh, sea Shark 13. Look we have this. that over. We have that image there. Nice. He had a Tranny Bane costume. Look at that. Oh, nice. Look at him. Oh. Big fan. And then the uh, the best Beautiful Bill Richmond, mom. half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond art contest winner is Conservative Jedi. I think we have that right here. So you guys are going to be winning a t-shirt and or mug. I don't know exactly. Um, <laughs> something. Definitely definitely something. This is a whole different show today. But we it have is. 7 plus 1, by the way, to oh, get to. Yeah. Nice. After James O'Keefe, 7 plus 1 top big tech legal dramas. Nice. A little bit of a theme That's here. It's going to be cool. I, like that. I feel so bad because Pantelis is, is from Montreal. He, he calls in by Skype and he works with the pitch meetings every morning. And then this week, because of all the sh yeah. That's been going on legally from the Oscars live stream, which we'll get to in a second. Pantelis was here and he had very little to do because we weren't able to <laughs> yeah, do the exactly. shows. But I got so to live. Many. I don't know what you're talking about. I was We're in California. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with this. Did I already did I already ruin the show? No, I'm I'm glad you got to come. But we'll we'll have you back out here soon. I hope. What is what is this? This is a very bizarre story. We'll have you back out here soon, right? Right, Pentelis? Yeah, of course. When you know legal troubles are done, yeah, come around. That means you'll never be back. Yes, exactly. You're next on the list. After I get sued, yeah, just now. I also thought, by the way, we're going to make a beer a beer from Brodigan's beard. We might want to take some yeast from your beard. And uh, a do a control idea. sample and see which beard yields the tastier beer. That's a good it idea. Sounds somewhat disgusting. No, it's not. Wow. I've had uh, beard beer before. It's really? delicious. Yeah. What? Yeah. As no, as I've had somewhat. beer from some guy's beard. This is like your experimental before. college. No, 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 no. It was, it was, it was, it was rogue. <laughs> Someone out there can tell me. I think it was Rogue Brewery, but I had. I thought, oh, my, I say this is the last time I sent my wife on a beer yeah, run. You know, punch her in the face a few times so I don't know what's yeah, what. Yeah, gave her yeah, a fresh yeah. one. No. And I was like, this beard beer is delicious. Really? Yes. Well, every time I hear wow. something like that, it makes me think. We did a story about a woman who made it with her oh, yeast. Oh, I'm my God. I'm not kidding. Yeah. No. See, yeah, you know what? Those are just reading thing. BuzzFeed titles no. just, now. Come on. I'm sorry, no, Pentelis. Really Why did you have to cross the line like that? I have no, no idea. Listen. I have no the idea. The line was crossed with me on the show. I, my I had legal to representation is present. You think this will bode well for us in a court? They're going to show a clip from you, you sick bastard. It's true. It'll show them behind the scenes. All right. So, listen. This is why Bill half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond is here. How are you, sir? Wonderful. Glad to be here. So, let's explain for people who don't know. We have a few things to get to. What happened on YouTube, why you guys have not seen the Oscar stream. And by the way, they're biding their time hoping that by the time this last false strike on our Oscar stream is removed, you guys won't want to see it. Make sure when that yes. Oscar stream is up, you like it oh, and yeah. comment yes. till the cows come home so they see that, you know what, they don't get to play this game. But we'll move on to YouTube as well as um, some other issues that have been occurring here behind the scenes. And it's just gotten to the point where our, our legal battles, have, you know, we're, we're at the point we've had you on retainer, you're probably going to be coming on full time. It's really <laughs> becoming right, a full time baby. job. How many, explain for people before we get to Facebook and James O'Keefe, the Oscars live stream. Explain to people what happened uh, there. 
Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's a multiple battle war that we fought over the last kind of 72 hours. This yeah. week has been pretty nuts. But just on the stream itself and then the archive, there was a, an initial takedown. I think a lot of folks, a lot of the followers and audience and, and fans saw that it got cut down right by an ABC Disney strike, copyright strike. Yeah. We're saying, hey, you're violating this and that. Shut it down right in the middle. Um, and just to focus right on that, the kind of arc of just the ABC Disney, we get the notification. The next day, we file a counter notification. We work with some of our uh, channel partners. We get in there, start you know talking to the YouTube lawyers, well, et cetera. Before, before you go, let me say, there were four strikes. Yeah. Four strikes, effectively, yes. on the same piece yeah. of content. Yeah. Correct. Four strikes in the same piece of content within 24 Excessive. hours. Three of them have been retracted or struck down, whatever term you want to use. Three of them. Yeah, or especially the, the one that happened during the live stream that cost us to be able to live yes. stream yes. on YouTube when we had 40,000 right. people but watching But this is important live. to note. We, had, we, we were well climbing to yes. 50,000. Yes. yes. This is important to note, and there was a hard strike. You get three of those, I think, in three months. We're no longer able to broadcast. To. Period. So all yeah. of the strikes, we should mention this, that are hard legal strikes, where when you file a counter notice, that's, hey, see you in court, and they're legally liable if it's a false strike. The, they're, they're all gone. We've never lost. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, there, so we get this this one, the, the first one of the four, ABC Disney comes in, everything just blows up on Sunday night. Then on Monday, we're following the things that we need to do. Everyone's getting crazy, going, you know, trying to investigate what is ABC Disney doing, reaching out to YouTube. Come Tuesday, they've dropped it. They've withdrawn it. They've looked at all of our arguments Insane. and they've said, oops, we're done. Right. They drop it. Well, that's just the first of the other of the four. So right. within the stream itself, after the ABC Disney one comes off on Tuesday, the Academy Awards decides that they want to have the a same claim. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't know that they're not run by the same parent company. I'm not entirely sure. The Academy is. Come on, they're in. Can, Either I, way, he it's, can't say it. It's I likely. think they're in cahoots. Go yeah. ahead. I mean, yeah, it's not outside so, the realm of possibility. I mean, I mean, look, they, look, they, they're obviously financially. It, 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 there's no secret. It's not even to be critical, but they have a network. The network's doing an event, and they're streaming the event, and the event is the Academy Awards. Right. So now the Academy comes in after ABC Disney has given up and says, "Oh no, 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 we're going to keep you down on the mat." Mm -hmm. But within 24 hours, again, we unleash the whole thing again, and they file a response back to our response, so a reply, right. if you will, that says, no, 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 we're totally right. <laughs> Four minutes later. <laughs> oh, totally. no, no, no. 48 seconds later. 48 oh. seconds later. The claim is dropped. The claim is dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Off the stream. Wait, but! Wait. That's not it. That's not. The, that's, that's not, not the all. Whole story. No, no. That's just two. That's, that's just two. Two of, of the four. Hold on. Let me let me interject real quick. Yeah. So people understand this is a tactic that they use. So this is great that we're able to get these strikes removed, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You yes. can't go yeah. back. All but one. Right. You can't go back. We can't go back to Sunday night and get that live stream that's back. True. We can't, can't get those go people back, back, those back watching back. the show. Yeah. And that's what's so. And that's a B And you bad. can't do well, anything on, about it. Let's go through the strikes and then I want to get into that. And any questions you have? Sorry. I'm just so that's number strike two. And then we up re-uploaded the archive, right? Because the the stream was cut in an hour. So, well, we're going to yes. re-upload the three hours. Well, he kept, everyone kept working. Everyone kept, yeah. you know, putting their contributions together. Everyone here, by the way, worked tirelessly all night because exporting a four-hour HD file <laughs> re-export uh. took all night. They were supposed to have a day off. No one's had time off. I'm incredibly appreciative to everyone. You know, even Brendan. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Yeah. I mean, they, they're coming now after the archive, right? They've said, okay, well, we were able to cut you off in an hour, hour and a half on the stream, but now you've got the full thing. You're uploading it so that the people can actually yeah. see what happened, and they throw the same ones in again. So Jeez. we've got this Academy coming in. ABC Disney, though, appeared to have learned their lesson, and they did not Pulled attack back. on the archive. So, But the Academy goes in. They do theirs. Now they've dropped theirs again, and then we had a fourth one on, this, mm -hmm. on the archive, which is still there, and we're still fighting right now. And to now. be clear, though, the fourth one, and this is why this is so important for people to understand, there's a broken YouTube system, right? There's If you file a hard strike, and for people out there, I know a lot of people are looking for legal representation, and we're, we're, we're planning on trying to provide some more assistance to other people out there at some point. We're just not there yet. Join up at Mug Club. We'll have more infrastructure. But uh, the hard strikes... That's what's that's different from a copyright claim that demonetizes you. Right. Almost all of our stuff is demonetized. We do a parody video, they demonetize us, say you use yeah, the Rocky done. track. It's like, but well, we did a direct parody of Rocky. We know it's fair use. Right. On that point, by the way, transformative, do you have the numbers from the Oscars? The numbers, what it was? The, the actual numbers? It was it was a three something hour stream. Yes, less it than was two minutes, I believe. It was two hours and thirty four minutes of our content. Meaning sketches, minutes. meaning yeah. sketches, sketches, totally original, non Oscars stuff. at all. 31 minutes of commentary, just us talking about it. So right. visual, and, what I would yeah, say, visual. visual and audio overlays that transform the original work yes. into something that is a new work and is critical of the original yes. work. 
Okay. I had to fit into a Freddie Mercury minutes. slash Eddie Murphy raw leather jacket. That's Transformers. <laughs> yes. Everything about it was transformative. I was a trophy. I know. <laughs> okay. We were all I was transformed. a cat. Yes, it wasn't it, nearly as. But a, four minutes of total time of the Oscars being full screen on our screen. Right. Four, four minutes. minutes. Four it. minutes, and that, that means with no commentary at all. No, with commentary. But still with commentary. Yeah. With, still how many with commentary. how many minutes of just the Oscars without commentary? It, it, you could count it in seconds. Is oh, that like yeah, one, yeah. one in one hundred twenty four? Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. So would that qualify or? as transformative? Because again, you just can't rip people's content. But the 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 law is it has to be transformative. Would right. that constitute transformative? I mean, well, it's not only transformative, but one of the other factors is how much of the original work are you just showing? wholesale and that's what you're doing is you're coming in you're commenting you're adding visuals yes. you're adding you're actually specifically critiquing the work right. and so yeah. of the few minutes or really actually seconds when you break it down a few seconds of clips here a few seconds of clips there where you're literally taking a breath between comments <laughs> right right yeah i mean that's what that adds up to over you know almost three hours i think hours the most amount of time we watched was rami malik's speech because we said yeah. oh he yeah. seems like a real class a act speech. and that we was commented it. Yeah, it was during fun. it too we were, we're like oh that's a good thing you know exactly. we yeah. we're like, oh, we'll, we'll give you one we'll give you one oscars you were you watching it uh, from yeah, yeah, of course. No, until no. it got shut down. I, I'm the one who got it shut down. I'm the one who told ABC about it. <laughs> <laughs> but nice. You know what I'm... I got a question. It's for you, a half-Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond. Yes, sir. <laughs> if they're repeatedly proven to be false claims, right, is there a legal recourse for us to be like, hey, listen, man, this is three, four times. Obviously, it's on purpose. So right. there, there is. There, uh, there is a whole procedure involved with doing that. And, and one of the things is, is that we can get involved with, sorry about that. So we can get involved with going after some of these you know, random accounts that are doing small fake claims. And maybe they do one a month or two or three a month. And look, we've got a lot of things that are happening. We can take away from dealing with this or we can go back in the war room and start dealing with these. But when they get to a level like this, when you have major companies yeah. that are coming in and saying, hey, we really don't like you creating new content and transforming our works in a way that appeals to this audience, yeah. that's when we have to stand up and do something different. Yeah. Right. And here, yeah. uh, you know, it's 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 an indictment of what they are doing themselves that these claims get dropped so quick. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. They know all of the claims are bogus. Right. This right. is what's important for people who are out there. This isn't just about us. We'll get to Facebook in a second. We just happen to be an example, unfortunately, because particularly on YouTube, we're the number one conservative channel, so we kind yeah. of are the blueprint. But tomorrow, it could be you. One of you could be the blueprint. Once you get popular enough, they will come for you. And they're coming for all of us. That's what's important. That's what we, yeah. have, we have this at uh, the Letter with Crowder shop, the de-platform this year. Yeah. Mug Club and our sponsors like Walther keep us in the game. Yeah. We've been demonetized yep. uh, on a lot of content, a ton of content. And that's not small money, by the no, way. No, and it's not yeah. small money. And increasingly, no. That being lately. said, that's, yeah, and that's really easy to do because they can say, oh, we're going to claim this, we're going to claim There really are, th there's no recourse. Now, when they try to hard strike your channel, that's where they affect, someone has manually submitted a legal notice and we, Bill, half Asian Bill, uh, half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond, manually submits a count, is it a counter notice? What is counter it? Counter notification. Okay, yeah. counter notification. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it goes to the courts. In other right. words, at that point, it's like, okay, listen, if you are lying here, now we're getting into legal hot water. They said, okay, we don't want any part of this. We've never lost. They've always retracted those. The thing is, it's the same claim. on the, They retracted the hard legal strikes right. on the stream. It's the same claim on the archive. All, it's just, there's no recourse because it blocks it in all countries. Yeah. They're saying, we're not hard striking your channel. We're just blocking it in all countries yeah. so no one can see it. And what do they have? They have a month to respond? Something yeah, like so that? It's the, a broken on system. On the non-hard strikes, they've got a month to respond. And then, you know, there's a different process related to it. But ultimately, that is why it's a it's a criticism of, of YouTube system. Because yeah. when you think about it, like all the history of what we have done over the last year, 18 months, two years, has been time and time and time again demonstrating how these claims are bogus. They're just used to disrupt business. They're used to right. make people have to stay like yeah. for you know the show to have to pay more people and do more resources and redo work and ultimately disrupt the audience and even though they know it's not ultimately going to stop us mm -hmm. they know it is going to have a disruptive effect and it's the only thing they can do so they keep doing it but how do they keep doing it youtube allows it to happen so it's not a system where despite uh 10 20 30 100 false claims that we've won every time yeah. and so they have to you know affirmatively prove it before we get affected right it's still we get affected and then we have to come and prove it the other way. Right, yeah. exactly. After after the stream is over, four days after the you exactly. know after the event has occurred. And well, this is pretty consistent across the board. By the way, disproportionately with conservative channels. You know, we went out there when uh, that lady came up who was talking about her. Was it ain't it cool news? She came out. Yeah. And uh, we said, have you been affected at all by the apocalypse? She's like, no, not at all. And I have someone I contact at YouTube. Like, could we have a name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> well, look, and, and it's a, it's a time sensitive thing, right? So right. the Oscars they happen, people kind of move on from it. Obviously, the show's fun and entertaining. You can go back to it. Think about it this way: think about if we're talking about a presidential election or a Senate election or some bill that's trying yeah. to be passed in Congress, and they're like, 
we're, we're commenting on what they're doing talking about it or if Congress is putting something out for us, we're commenting on that. They can shut us down so that we can't they influence have. people. They tried to shut us right? down once with, the presiden- a with a presidential debate. Yeah, exactly. And by so the way, here's one thing to horrible. This is some, a tool that's disproportionately used by the left. This is what people need to understand because conservatives don't go out and try and abuse the system. You can find more content than you could watch in a lifetime. Uh, everything uh, from calling me gay to a secret transvestite to a part of the Illuminati to a Nazi. Secret? We don't go I out. I mean, come on, let's be honest. We just don't have enough, <laughs> we just don't have enough female actresses here. Um, nice. Th- th- but we don't try and shut those down. You're, you you don't try and shut any of those down. We actively, yep. as a matter of fact, one time someone ripped an entire show. Oh, yeah. And we just reached out to them yeah. and said, hey, listen, man, I, I appreciate the, the zeal, but could you take it down because it's, it's our whole show. Yeah. And we'd rather you just maybe take a clip and direct them to our show. This person put up a clip instead and directed them to our whole show. Perfect. We go out of our way to make sure that we are following the kind of fair use rules that we preach. Mm-hmm. Just going to tell you something here. We're not talking about information. We're not talking about a, a request for Somebody getting sued. <laughs> 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 you glasses, you teeth, something, get, something getting f***ed up, Larry. That's why we got half Asian lawyer Bill Who Richmond here. Nice. Is there anything that you think I've missed on YouTube? Because now this moves us on to... Uh, uh, the big thing that many of you may not know about this week, if you haven't been following James O'Keefe, is the Facebook yeah. issue. So all oh, wow. week, picture this. If this were your job, okay, and you suck at math, which, okay, I do as well. And someone said, you have to do math all day. That's your job. That's been my job this week. <laughs> so it's going back Asian, and forth with difficult. Bill yeah. okay. on legal issues. Going, well, what can we do? What? I'm not good at this. I want to focus on creating content. I want to focus on creating more shows. And this week, we were precluded from doing any of that. And poor Pentelis was here. He just wanted to have a good time. Just wanted to <laughs> tell the jokes, as they say in Montreal, the Greek sound. And instead, he's sitting here going, what's happening with your lawyer? I yeah. can't believe it. That's bullshit. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. That is literally a quote. Yeah. Pretty much exactly what you bro, said. Bro, bro. Uh, okay, so we had YouTube, and then we have Facebook. Well, let me give you a little bit of history here with, with Facebook. I guess, Bill, l- why don't you jump in kind of on the general sure. history with Facebook before we're going to have James O'Keefe on to talk about the most recent, I don't know, at, at this point, is it even a, a sin at this point? What do you call it? Did you just call uh-huh. it? I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's dishonesty. It's yeah. just, I don't know. Go ahead, Bill. So, so immediately after we met in the half-Asian zone, yeah. um, we dealt with <laughs> yes. the Facebook debacle. And, and, and a lot of folks were around then. A lot of the early longtime fans knew that, you know, there was a, uh, you know, there was a suspicion that things were not going right. And yeah. at the time, uh, before the Gizmodo article came out, you were I didn't know you. That's how I met we, you. We did not yeah. even know each other. And at that point, you, you finally realized, okay, after months and months of trying to figure out why is my whole advertising platform being threatened uh, through Facebook? Why, yeah. why is all of this negativity happening? Why am I literally sending them hard checks with this is, money? This is important for people to note with Facebook. I've run ads on Facebook for years. And what happened was all yeah. of a sudden they came to me and said, hey, you didn't, you're, you didn't pay your tab. I said, well, hold on a second. You've charged me for two years every single week, and you've charged me every single week thereafter. Yeah. There's just a two-week gap. I don't know what you guys did, but here's my credit card. Here's my PayPal. Fix it. They said, we can't. You're not, you're not good on your tab. I said, well, hold on a second. Well, here's another credit card. I don't know. It's gonna, you have to talk with accounts. And I said, okay, hold on. Let me talk with accounts, but you're still charging me for ads. <laughs> they would not answer the call. They said, you're gonna, no we're going to put your account into delinquency. That's that means crazy. creditors go after me. can destroy your life. Yeah. What did I do? Your good friend Jordan said, mail them a check physically to accounts payable. They deposited it. <laughs> I think we have it as an overlay here. And then they still said, oh, your account isn't in good standing. I'm like, well, hold on a second. You've taken the money and you're still taking money for ads. What, what do I do? And then the Gizmodo article comes out. This was in 2016 yep. where mm-hmm. I was named as someone. And this isn't about, this is one thing, you know, Alex Jones was on Joe Rogan. We were talking yeah. about it. Like, we're going to get in, we're gonna get in that in a, sec- in a second, Joe. Choke me out. Okay. <laughs> Interdimensional elf demons. I actually thought it was very, enter- <laughs> very entertaining. They're interdimensional demon elves. Interdimensional uh, aliens. I'm not talking. Brr, aliens. It's the I'm clockwork talking, elves, brr, man. The clockwork elves. Okay, Joe. <laughs> There's You're a lot doing of this. Right now. There was wildly entertaining. Your face is not red uh, enough but, for that impression. <laughs> But the, 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 I don't even, what was I saying? I was saying something uh, before this. Oh, okay, so this happened with the Facebook Gizmodo, issue. Yeah. And then Gizmodo, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. there was an article leaked where we were manually uh, selected as a page to throttle. It was Ted Cruz for president, <laughs> Chris Kyle Foundation, nice. and myself. And I called Bill, not knowing about the time, saying, I don't, I, can, I don't know if this is related to the accounting issue, but it, it, can you tell me what you think? And he says, well, let me check it out, and I'll call you back. And then you call me back, and you said, yeah, this looks really bad. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> well, you know, I mean, you, you get a call and you hear something like this and you think, mm, crackpot. And then, the, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, Crazy. but I mean, you can imagine I get a lot of calls of that are, you right. know, some are, you know, you know, got credibility and some don't. And so you got to check them out. And when we started to look into it and we started to investigate and we started to say, if you if you investigate it as a true thing, what are the things you could use to verify that this is the way that it's happening? And when you looked at, I mean, before I even got involved, you were time after time after again, message, 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 money, 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 card, 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 check, nothing. Yeah. Um, and then Gizmodo just confirmed that the suspicions that you had at the time that there was something happening. And what the big part here is that that we've always said this, right? You know, we've people use the term censorship, which we I, you know, we understand is a governmental thing versus a private company thing. Right. And hey, this is their sandbox. They can create certain rules within the con under the Constitution, federal law, state law. They can set the rules for their their sandbox and say, I'll the, I'm, you, I'll invite you in. You can spend some money here. It'll all be good. But the problem is when they say the rules are a but they are actually enforcing a set of rules called B. And right. that's what happened here. They're telling you, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of your money to build your business on this platform because here are the rules. But in reality, the rules were different for you. Right, right. And Breitbart and Chris Kyle And by the way, and a lot of conservatives out there, this, we've seen this disproportionately target conservatives. We'll talk with James O'Keefe about this. This isn't just about us, it's about anyone out there. If, if you've had suspicions, unfortunately, uh, we have the resources to have confirmed quite a few of these suspicions. It's happening, I don't want to say across the board, but it's certainly happening a lot to conservatives. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people out there say, well, I don't know, and there's no way to prove it. Well, you do have to take legal action, and we've done that in the past, but I think it has to get a lot more severe going forward. Imagine it's, this is your work. You, I don't know, you own a factory where you make chairs. Okay? And you agree to a lease, you build up a factory, and they come in, you have a five-year lease at year two. They say, by the way, we're going to quadruple the lease, what you're paying. And you say, well, hold on a second, we have an agreement. They go, nah, there's a loophole in there. But hold on, I, I, I paid for this. We had an agreement. That's what's happened with Facebook. That's what's happened with YouTube, is we've come to an agreement largely because they've courted us. They sh they wined and dined us and sent, I mean, sent us to New York. Just, not just yeah. largely. I mean, the Facebook emails, I mean, they're basically getting on their knees like, please come spend your money on our ads. <laughs> and then like, the next email is, uh, well, but we actually are taking your money, but we don't know where the money's going. It's just going into the Zucker zone. Yeah, right, exactly, the Zucker zone, where all the conservatives sit there at that, what was that thing? that summit and you're like, oh really, I think you're Ernest Becker, please don't harm me. <laughs> and he's like, I am a human. Drink yeah. the water. I am a human. Drink the water. <laughs> no, I wonder what George time. Soros is doing right now. Round him oh, up. That was awesome. Um, here's my question. So with that, that's how we met. Yeah. The result there was you spoke with top, uh, would you say top legal brass at Facebook? Uh, they, they had some outside counsel. The outside counsel were very helpful. The inside folks, they had to get to the right folks. But ultimately, the, there there was none of this, uh, you know, screw you, we're not going to do, do what you want. What you're saying is completely, you know, bogus. It was, uh, okay, here, we're going to apply your money. Here's your money back. Here, I mean, it was, it was a resolution that got us yeah. what we needed and in a place to where they had The said, resolution was a little more acquiescent than that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Okay, it was resolved outside of court, so we can't necessarily I mean, discuss look, it. But it, listen, yeah, they weren't like bullshit. They weren't talking. They were a because they weren't Pantelis, <laughs> yeah. but b they didn't they didn't deny it. That's it was a I result. Mean, and the point was, hey, if there's a problem going forward. We'll be there to, to make sure it's okay. And 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 look, there's there's got to be a fairness here to say that you know Facebook's one of the largest employers in the country. Sure. There's a lot of people, and there's maybe at times where you could say, hey, someone's acting rogue, or hey, maybe right, there's right. an unintentional. But you know, the, the Gizmodo article was most important because it wasn't just one person saying, hey, I looked in the cubicle next door, and this guy's deleting conservative pages, right? It was like, no, no, there's a whole room of people, and then actually we have papers, <laughs> the and the papers say ban the conservatives, <laughs> right? It's like, well, I accidentally printed this policy and put it into place for years. I mean, <laughs> so I mean, that's not. <laughs> It was There's a draft. A difference it shouldn't have gotten louder, right? It was and, a draft. And part, right. of, part of the resolution with Beta, Facebook, yeah. I think we can say this, was we'll, we're going to make sure this doesn't happen again. Right. And so that, you know, we took it with the word. Things did change. There was, you know. A little bit. A <laughs> A little bit is a little change. A little bit, a little bit change. A little bit, a little bit change. Baby steps, baby steps in the um, elevator. And, and then really, baby steps, DMT, sex party in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yes, all true. And, <laughs> it, and so, you know, the, we move on, right? We move on to get back to the business of content, of red-faced <laughs> Okay, so a minute. No. <laughs> And that's what we get to, right? Yeah. That's, you know, well, it's like, hey, go okay, back to the so content. They said, this is not going to, yeah, we wanted to get back to the content. And this can happen to any of you. You know this. We've tried to focus on content. We've built up Mug Club to hedge our bets. Um, after this, this is another example of what happened. Facebook started. 
before we get to James O'Keefe very soon, Facebook started something called Show Pages. Mm -hmm. And they reached out to us and they said, hey, we'd like you to be a show page, which was shows basically, as I understood it, uh, multimedia type pages would yeah. be in someone's feed, would be given priority. Basically, you would automatically appear at the top of the feed. Yes. I don't know exactly what it was. Yeah. But lower level people reached out and said, we think you're the perfect kind of content for a show page. And we said, well, hold on, how is this going to work once we convert it? What if it doesn't work? What if can we convert back? And they said, you know what? All right, fine, we'll give it a go. And they came back to us and said, uh, we can't make you a show page. <laughs> because we, we watched said, what? Content. Why? And they said, uh, you're not eligible. So here's what's happened. It's the same thing that's happened with YouTube. When they look at just the numbers, when they look at just the impact, they go, hey, this is the exact kind of content we want on our platform. Right. Very highly engaged. It's content that people are, wa people are watching on YouTube, for example. We keep people on site. You watch an average of 12 minutes per video, over 30 minutes on a podcast. We play by every single rule, and they change it. So they said, please, 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 please turn your show into a show page. We want you to be one of these pioneers as a multimedia show page. Then uh, you're not allowed to do it. Um, and we always suspected one thing, too. We had this, we called it here the YouTube algorithm, the YouTube yeah. Facebook sort of Mysterious. equation where yeah. if we would have 20 or 30,000 viewers on YouTube, we'd have 1,000 on Facebook. Yeah. Despite at the time, we would have more fans on wow. Facebook. We'd have, I think we have about 2.5 million fans, something like yeah. that, 2 and 2.5 two and million fans. It would be a 10th to a 20th to a 40th the number. Oh, you yeah. can compare all of that's the YouTube insane. views to Facebook. We always suspect, we're going, well, hold on a second, our video, that's our bread and butter, but no one sees them on Facebook. And we have screenshot after screenshot after screenshot of people sending us saying, we're not seeing your stuff in our feed. And that uh, again comes to, we'll, we'll never let this happen again, Crowder. We promise. And we're going, well, let's think we think this is happening again. <laughs> well, wait a second. Now, remember, one of the possible explanations here is that they have the crappiest live stream product on the planet. <laughs> yeah, very I possible. mean, one that of their main defenses could be, well, yeah. you just, it's because our product is the worst. Yeah, come on. <laughs> So, I mean, that's, okay, in their defense, I mean, you got to think of the devil's advocate arguments. They could, literally, they could come down and say, I'm so sorry, it's our fault, we cannot do this because we are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that so the possible. WWE live streams on Facebook are super huge. They're like 50,000 viewers at any given time, and they run fine, so. Yeah, yeah but I it's heard just a lot replicants of, that stuff. of McMahon, that's it. I heard a lot of that stuff might be scripted, though, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's fake, Wait, what? fake news. Oh, it's fake news. Don't tell us fake news. I'm sorry. I just love the Greek Montreal <laughs> stuff. Um, and then, so explain that brings us to, we'll have him on in a second. That brings us to what was just revealed in the O'Keefe video. So oh, yeah. do, you, do you want to tell people before we bring James out? Sure. So um, so most recently, uh, James O'Keefe was, you know, uh, he, I'm sure everyone's familiar with some of his prior work uh, in doing undercover videos and whatnot, but was able to get some just amazing insider information. And not just someone who decided they wanted to give an anonymous tip, but someone who's willing to uh, put their, you know, life at risk, their career, their professional life at risk um, mm -hmm. to describe what was going on behind the scenes regarding dethrottling or throttling. I think it's called de -boost. De -boost is the yeah, name of the program, but yeah. throttling of live streams and specifically, again, Stephen Crowder's at the top of that. And what's important here is I'm this page, and the only reason wow. I don't want to do the like, well, I want to talk about myself and, and Von Braun, Joe. I just, <laughs> what I'm saying, <laughs> we'll get back to we that. are unfortunately an example uh, of potentially anybody, but we are the only, as far as I know, at page that was fingered in both the Gizmodo article back then. And now with video live streaming, a big part of that was we lost so much profit on Facebook because yeah. people weren't clicking the links anymore. Yeah. Traffic was being throttled. We said, okay, we're going to focus more on multimedia. And then that went, and we kept saying, well, what's going on here? It doesn't make any sense. We can look at our growth on Mug Club. We can look at our growth on YouTube. Why is this not applying on Facebook? No answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. That's what's so important to note here is this is something we had long suspected. We've talked, yeah. to, as a matter of fact, we talked about never live streaming again yeah. on Facebook and yeah. just live streaming because we can only split it two it. ways to YouTube and to Mug Club yeah. because we got so few viewers. Then this drops from James O'Keefe. Yeah. And yeah. we're sitting there going, okay, he has the code. He has the actual oh code gosh. that's baked into our page. Again, tell me that that's not a dishonest business yeah. practice. We, if you tell us you can't say the word tranny, all right, fine. You tell me you're not going to verify us on Instagram. We all, okay, fine. But you can't bake in code that you don't tell us about that inhibits our ability to make a living. Speaking of which, hit the notification bell if you're watching on YouTube, which is really the only place you're probably watching. Uh, but more <laughs> important, 
uh, join Mug Club, ladderscutter.com slash Mug Club for 27 cents a day and subscribe on iTunes as well so you can listen yeah. to the audio version. And if yes. we get completely shadow banned or deplatformed, at least we can tell you yeah. on the iTunes. Uh, I think real quick, let's let's get him on. Oh, do we yeah, have yeah, James? Me, yeah. We do have. We, okay, we have uh, him here, Bill. Uh, I know you'd like to, uh, it's not cross-examining because he's not, in, we're not in court here, but James O'Keefe, projectveritas.com slash brave. I know they're asking people out there, everyone out there to carry cameras with you. And really, if you don't have the hidden camera stuff, you, you can use your phone. We've used that in the past. Where yeah. We're just using an iPhone. I'm on the phone. No, I'm catching you in a <laughs> felony. Uh, James O'Keefe, how are you, sir? Good to be with you. Sorry to hear about the deboosting, but I'm here to, to help you uh, answer with information. Well, I, I appreciate it. I know you, you let me know about this. You sent me the video, and I saw the response here from The Virgin. Then I know Bill has some questions. Or Bill, do you want to lead this off as far as your, your questions with, with James? I would. I would. James, thanks for being available. Uh, obviously, everyone's been following this very closely, and, and the work is, is really appreciated, I know, across the community. Um, and, and you know, probably my first question right off the bat, and I think what a lot of people are interested in knowing is, how did you understand the credibility of the information you were doing uh, that you were obtaining, and what steps did you take to make sure that it was uh, verifiably correct? Well, that's a great question. How do we Bill? know you're not a liar? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, um, we, this this took a long time. Um, uh, let's see. Where do I start? So. About a year ago, we had uh, this insider send us these documents, and the, this was a lot of documents, and I'm not an engineer, so I don't know exactly what they mean. Fast forward a couple months, we get a lot of information, we get a lot of tips at Project Veritas, as you can imagine, from a lot of people claiming to be a lot of things. Right. And we find out that this person did, in, in, in fact, work, or she claimed to work in content review intellectual property. So we look at the documents, and you know, my team went through all these documents, and we see the word deboost, and we go, whoa. Because you don't have to be an engineer when you see this term, and I have it in front of me, I action deboost live distribution. And there was a screenshot of Mike Cernovich's, this, this woman had actually taken out a camera and took a picture of the computer screen showing this deboost. So we're like, oh, oh my God, I can't believe we didn't notice this earlier. Answer your question, I could tell the whole story, but I'll cut it to the bottom line is, we, I, have an, I have other sources inside Facebook that are not willing to go on the record, of course, and, I, and, 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 and a couple of them logged into the back end and showed me this engineer's name, Danny Ben David, showed me his definition of, of um, uh, deboosting. So I know this is real. I know that it's not just a made-up document that someone photoshopped because I saw it with my own eyes from another source that corroborated the identity of the engineer and the document itself. But the other source was did not have access to the um, the other part of Facebook where this deboosting activity took place, he could only corroborate that deboosting was a thing and that Danny Ben David is in fact someone who works for Facebook. And number three, Facebook's response corroborates the fact that this woman is real because they fired her and they, and, and I'm actually quite captivated by the response because they say it, it fired her for in fact leaking these documents. Mm. That's mm. a big Deal. Notice no denial. It, because I did not know why they fired her. We couldn't report how they fired her. We thought maybe she got fired because she was a bad employee. No, they fired her for leaking these documents. Would this meet the standard so, for evidence? Does, does does his case hold water? So in terms of having some substantial evidence, having someone who can corroborate what the evidence is, that is actually what it purports to be, and then can actually explain it, you're going to hit those authenticity, you're going to hit admissibility, so it goes a long way to what you have. And from a practical standpoint, it's not just having one piece of evidence, and, and that's kind of why I wanted to ask about the credibility. Everything that we do here, and I know that you do as well, is based on not just a, a rumor or a hearsay or a random anonymous tip, but it's taking those things and verifying them separately and individually, and so that's knowing what the credibility is in the steps you took, in addition to afterwards getting, you know, essentially verified by Facebook, uh, acknowledging, I think, Stephen, you raised not a very good point. Not to include the 7 plus 1, by the way. Not that's, not, that's not very well researched, but that'll come up next. <laughs> later, later. But um, th the other big point there is that this was the opportunity for them to deny, James, the work that you had done, and they didn't. They, in fact, right. very much corroborated that these documents are there. They could have said these documents are fake. But before we get to didn't. that, I do have a question. How do you know I was included on uh, the deboost amongst the deboosted? So, uh, and I have a copy of the, you know, this is the, the from the video. This is the actual code. It says, I action, Sigma, I action, deboost, live distribution. This whistleblower took a screenshot of Mike Cernovich's page and then she she saw this code appear on your page, Stephen. We didn't get a screenshot of your page. 
but we did get a screenshot of the code mm -hmm. that appeared on your page. This is a Psi Sigma I action deboosh live distribution by this engineer. And that, that's something that would be discovered in a, a motion for discovery, motion for And I asked, mm -hmm. the, I, I asked the whistleblower, I, I, no, whistleblower insider, whatever you want to call her, I said, would you swear under oath in a court of law that you saw this on Steven Crowder's page is 100%. She saw this deboost action taken on your page and the Daily Caller's page and Mike Cernovich's page she did not see it on any other liberal, liberal or po you know, pol political liberal pages. She only saw it on your page. So then I asked you, Steve, and I said, well, did you do anything malicious? Did you talk about suicide in such a way that would get you banned? Did I, I you probably have in the sense that I've said, don't do it. Well, that, well, that's, you, shouldn't be, well you shouldn't be banned for that. And if you are deboosted, they should be notifying you. Yes, we certainly were not notified yeah, of, of the deboosting. Um, and I think something that's really important here as well, James, and you didn't know this before you released this article. You know, this is how I met Bill Richmond. We just talked about the Gizmodo article because they, there was a leak uh, where someone said we were manually throttling pages. Before that, uh, Bill and I had talked about this, uh, we had several videos trending at the top of Facebook. One of them was guns, and I, I can't remember what the other video was. It could have been the Feminist Film Festival. And then afterwards, we never trended again. And we had an issue with accounting, and uh, this article came out, and I spoke with, with, with Bill. And you didn't know that I was one of the few people named to, be, to have been manually throttled before, and I think I'm the only one named in both of these stories. Back uh, in that one, it was right. Chris Kyle Foundation, Ted Cruz for President, Breitbart. I think Breitbart, mm -hmm. and yours truly. And here, the only three that I've heard named are, are I believe you said Cernovich, Daily Caller, and myself. So a big part of us dealing with Facebook was, hey, this ain't going to happen again, and that's why this story was such a surprise. Well, one of, the, one of the most shocking things about the story, and this is what the insider said, is that what makes this so damning, what makes it so egregious is that, uh, listen, let me defend Facebook for one second here. Mm -hmm. Facebook has thousands of employees that police. There are some anomalies where some crazy low-level employee takes down you know, Ben Shapiro or takes down Den Dennis Prager. I actually saw that happen. I, I, the insider showed me. You know some things and i saw that they but people they get put back up i mean you can protest you can say listen i didn't do anything wrong but and, and it's justified with notoriously uh uh, uh anti-semitic jewish scholar nazi dennis prager yeah we get dennis it. prager right but if he's some anomaly some low-level left-wing employee in facebook takes the guy down he right. gets put back up and there is a, a there is a commitment to police this sort of crazed, you know, extremist uh, employees at Facebook because there are, you know, we have 60,000 people. Once in a while, someone's going to take someone down and there's there's adults in the room. But in this case, the deboosting, you guys don't know that it's happening to you. That's the thing that is very shocking. That is the reason why I asked her, she said, well, the reason why I chose to lose my job and leaks these documents, she actually went on food stamps for a few months because she was broke and unemployed is because she said the people don't know that it's occurring. Mm. It doesn't even show up on Facebook's content review, I'm sorry, on Facebook's task management system. It doesn't show up that they're doing it. That's it and I've got 75 pages of code, I action, it's automatic, it's machine learning. They go through your videos, Stephen, they convert your videos into text, they find keywords, the keywords trigger an algorithm which automatically deboosts you, and you don't know that. We had a, we called it something in the office. The the U, I think uh, Quarter Black knows this. We called it sort of the Facebook yeah. to YouTube ratio, in the sense that we were almost guaranteed whatever stream viewership we had on YouTube, it would be anywhere from one tenth oh, yeah. to a thirtieth the amount on Facebook, and same thing for videos that were uploaded. And here's the thing with YouTube, and I'm not I'm not letting YouTube off the hook here. Uh, certainly, not when we just talked about ABC Disney and the broken system there, we can see how long people are watching our videos for, where they're coming in. Uh, we can look at demographics. We we can tell exactly how many people are watching. And we can never really tell that with Facebook. And we haven't been able to monetize videos as far as I know on Facebook. But when you have consistently videos, I think our average viewership is, is, is close to the million mark. Uh, yeah. And then on Facebook, it's 40,000, 50,000. When there's still a couple million fans who've liked that page proactively, we just had, we just assumed it was, well, Facebook's dying off because nobody likes it anymore. And they're, you know, snapping uh, wiener pics on, <laughs> on Snapchat and, and Instagram. 
turns out that might not be the case. Did you have some other important... Uh... Well, what, one of the other questions is, is in a lot of these instances, when you hear from one of the social media platforms, they'll say, you broke this rule, however subjective or vague the rule might be, and so we're right. going to have this consequence. But at least we have a rule that we can argue with or fight with or that right. kind of thing. Here, the response from Facebook is very interesting. They say, well, you may have acted with misconduct by uploading to the live stream pre-recorded videos. But what you don't find is, where's the example of this actually happening? If this really was was a rule that Facebook had in its policies at some point in the past, and it was actually violated, why hide behind a secret and algorithm? I think James has that, that quote, because I don't think we filled the audience in mm -hmm. on that. They did respond, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, and they didn't deny can, that they've been doing this. I can read it to you, or you can throw it on screen, but I'm going to read you Facebook's response to this iAction deboost. So, so what's interesting about the response, Bill, is that Again, the, in, within like an hour of our story breaking, Facebook corporate responds to their, their, their buddies at TheVerge.com. And, and all these mainstream media reporters are buddy-buddy with the people inside Facebook. Facebook says, quote, some pages that tried to game the system by uploading pre-recorded videos to the live API, a violation of Facebook's policy, if moderators found the video, the action deboost tag would be applied to undo the news feed boost otherwise applied to live videos. And Stephen, I asked you, do you recall doing this or, did, you know, making no, no, that one, no one here has ever done it. I know Quarter Black has been in charge of that. No one here has ever done it. But if it would have been done, it would have been done a long time ago once to test because we thought there was something fishy with our live streams going, well, hold on a second. We're getting 1,000 viewers <laughs> on a live stream here and we're getting 20, 30,000 on YouTube. What's going on? Let's see if we upload this as a video separately versus a live feed. If it would have been done, and I don't believe that it has, I just don't want to be put on the hook for that, it would have been done once to test uh, a theory that we thought Facebook is doing exactly what they appeared to be doing. So, no, I don't know that we have done it, and we certainly haven't done it consistently, and their answer isn't very, to me, it's not very clear if they just de-boost that video, that feed, or if they de-boost the whole page, because we spent a lot of money on Facebook advertising, right. and a big part of that was them courting us, saying, hey, the great thing here, especially with media, is you're going to appear in people's timelines. We really want to be a multimedia platform. They came to us, so that's why right. it would be nice to have clarification. Well, another thing, that, another fact that's very interesting is that if you look at the code in the video where it says Sigma Distribution, Sigma is this is this name of this program authored by this engineer Danny Ben David with the intention of rooting out like suicide. I mean, people on Facebook live stream. This is, Facebook's a big company. People kill themselves on Facebook. There's pornography. There's people getting chopped in half. It, there's all gory thing, child porn. The content review agents go through and and go through that. So this system was apparently used to combat things like that. That does not exist in Facebook's response, but my insider showed me that, that the, the, the reason why this was taken, uh, allegedly, right. was to combat suicidal or, or violent things. So I'm, I'm hearing two different explanations of what this deboost is for. If you want my opinion as, a, as someone who's done this for 10 years, you know, hidden camera, exposing people, I think they're just caught and uh, they're not uh, they're not debating what we've exposed. They're just sort of obfuscating here. And I think you guys are owed an explanation. I think you need to see the back end and you need to know what's going on with your live stream. So in their defense, if it's the, the, the child porn issue, they could have seen your nudie scene and been confused. Yeah, I just look like a child. It, Bill is very baby like they could have thought it was cherubim <laughs> porn. Um, do you have any, you have any other follow-ups here for, well, for James? you know, the, the kind of the, the big thing is, is like I was saying, is if there really was a violation, then they lead with saying you have violated X policy instead of a post hoc, well, okay, our response now for having done this for however many years or months it's been going on and only to your pages is because we think you may have done something wrong. But notice the response does not even say the pages at issues or the pages that were discussed or Steven Crowder did these things. They yeah. just say kind of generally, oh, well, that's why we did it. And that might even be true, but I think, James, your point is correct. There has to be a, an opening of the kimono. Let's let's share what exactly yes, you have are to go the to the kimono here. reference. Of course, yeah, you're just trying of to. Course. He's trying to make sure if there ever were, if there if there is to be a lawsuit, that he has the Asian card in there. But it's really only half a kimono. Uh, it's a very short kimono. It's like Rob Lowe in Thank You for Smoking. I do have a question for you though, and a, then a follow. Maybe James can also help clarify this. How important would it be 
if let's say an emotion for is it a motion for discovery? Is that what it is? Well, you you would serve discovery requests. Okay, sure. so how important how important would it be to let's say a case if it were verified that this is a real thing and it seems like it's a real thing they're not denying it and that it was not equally applied across conservative and liberal platforms? Would that change it if they would if they said well this was applied pretty much consistently across uh, leftist platforms not just conservatives? It, w- what it would do is it would only mean that everyone is being conned. That's that's really what it would mean. It, it does make it worse if it's targeted to a certain political group, just right. as if it would be bad if it was gone after a certain race or a religion or that type of thing. But it's essentially saying a political creed or a race or religion is bad, but it's it's somewhat like hate crimes. The crime is still a crime, regardless right. of what whether it's a hateful or targeted at a specific group. And, and James, can you confirm anything like that? That it was. I know you said your source mentioned this, but do you have any information right. that could confirm that uh, people on the right were more unfairly targeted? Yes, we. One of the there's a part two of the story. There's, there's a deboosting, and then there's this other part of the story. I got these documents on my desk, so I have my facts correct here. These are all these are all screenshots taken by the woman who blew the whistle. This is something called a troll report. A troll report where they identify language that uh, there's a whole bunch of tactics they use. There's a glossary of words that are used by individuals, and and this guy confirms that they do in fact demote. Bad p- content. Can and you give us some examples of those words? Because I, I read this, uh, I've seen this, right. and I was uh, obviously uh, not appalled, but I wish right. I could say surprised. Not surprised, just it was really more of a disappointed parent. Like, ah, uh, you, re- you <laughs> well, did that one, Facebook? Are, so I want to make sure I get my facts straight. And, I, and, and this is incontrovertible proof, Stephen. This is not my words. The whistleblower, were, were, these are documents obtained of this troll report where they use words like lulls, normie. Um, mainstream media, MSM, the, the yeah. term MSM, uh, but this is these are terms appropriated by conservatives. Liberals don't really use the term MSM on social no. media. Isn't SJW and, on there? SJW is on there. What else? Um, uh, what, what? No leftist channel is. It's not like they've reappropriated <laughs> the word and go. We're proudly SJW. I right mean, now. you know, maybe if you found some like transgender uh, black single mom with rickets, maybe there's someone who would <laughs> carry that mantle. But that's something. If they are saying these are words to throttle pages, putting in SJW would definitely uh, disproportionately target conservatives. So, and I don't so know why LOL is on that list. Yeah, that's a little weird. So, no, it's lul, L-U-L-Z. It's uh, like a, oh, you know, it's lul, a meme, lul. meme. So this is after, so here's the, the deal. The On the inside of the Facebook, we saw the Seiji Yamamoto character, one of the top engineers, right? After the 2016 election. Right from Nintendo? Meme, <laughs> yeah, meme, meme culture kind of helped elect President Trump. So they decided to have an influence on elections, and this is one of the most powerful parts of the story. They assigned it what's called a, a, uh, a troll score uh, under the fake account index, a special feature leading, this is a direct quote, leading up to important elections, unquote, identifying these keywords that conservatives use. This is like a big deal. They're, and Mark Zuckerberg said under oath in testimony last uh, spring that they don't do this, that they don't make political determinations. Yes, they ban Klansmen and pornography and violence, but they don't but this engineer, Seiji Yamamoto, and he's not a low-level guy. He he's the head of the whole department that heads this stuff. We have a copy of the of the confidential report where they identify these words, and it's all in the documentation that this whistleblower uh, gave to us. Uh, do you have any more questions? You that's feel- it for right now. Okay, that's well, we it for right now. Well, James, uh, Mr. O'Keefe, please do keep us in the loop, uh, obviously, because we do have a half Asian uh, Kraken here. Who, Kraken? Kraken? Kraken. I, keep, I don't know why I keep saying it incorrectly. Uh, it is projectveritas.com slash brave, not to be confused with that awful Pixar film. It was a uh. big swing and a miss for Pixar with the redhead. Uh, James, thank you for being here, brother. We appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. And no, uh, no, 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 no. You don't need a break. We don't need a break. We're going to be going to the 7 plus 1 here in just uh, oh. uh, now, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. Forgot the one in the chamber. Eight. By the way, there yeah, is no one in the chamber. We checked no. this. For people who are just tuning in now, <laughs> just we checked it. We cleared it. it. Yeah. Uh, this Safe. week is actually, if you haven't noticed the theme, seven plus one big tech legal dramas. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, we're looking. Yeah. Well, it, well, speaking speaking of which, I had a quick question for uh, right. a half Asian lawyer. You were here. both muted during the James O'Keefe interview, in case you. Well, tell. I'm just sitting here listening and soaking it all in. Yeah. Um, has there has there been any widespread? Um, Throttling and and deboosting essentially of of liberal accounts. Like have 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 a lot of liberals come forward? Because all I've really heard, and this may be my own bias, um, he literally I, just of, said that while you were in the bathroom. Oh, he literally <laughs> just said no. Yeah. As far as he knows, Shoot. as far as he knows, because of the trigger words they use, like at any page that has SJW, 
No, yeah. because you haven't seen it in the media. I have. I, I thought I knew the answer. I think the answer would be no. But I'm asking him. Like, is there anything behind the scenes where, like, oh, it's both conservatives and liberals getting screwed? It just seems no. like conservatives are getting screwed. And I just wanted it to be not my for, opinion, but fact. Well, hold on. You don't know yet. That's why you have to sue. <laughs> Allegedly. 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 Yeah, there, yes. There's the word. There's Allegedly, the keyword. According to the eyewitness. <laughs> <laughs> and the mountains of documents that we have. A phone photo of a computer screen. Right. Allegedly. Um, it, it is that the specific code was only seen on conservative pages. And of those conservative pages, gotcha. the ones that were memorable, Mike Sergovich has got an actual screenshot, which was not able to get a screenshot of Stevens, but affirmatively said, I saw the code on Stevens' page. Wow. And then said, and it was not tonight. I've seen wow. other pages that did not have the code. Right. So is it possible that it is on other pages? Sure. Absolutely. Is that something that Facebook could come out and be like, hey, guys, actually, it's on everyone. Hey, look, we can show you the usage that we actually only did it if you uh, uploaded a pre-recorded video to the live feed, which is the excuse they've given. Right. But they have not said any of that. No, they no. haven't said any of that. They've None said that we violated rule, which, which we may or may not have violated once. I'm willing to bet my bottom dollar that we have never done that. And if we did, you don't get to so. throttle an entire page. Yeah. Uh, something else I was going to say. This is one thing, too, why... And I, I really did enjoy uh, Alex Jones on Joe Rogan's show. And they're both, actually, they've both been on the show. I can so tell them both, both friends. Great. Um, but there was a point where they were talking. They were saying, is it true that uh, on Facebook, on, on YouTube now, they demonetize any videos that have the word truth or liberty in them? And they're like, they're like yes, it is. And here's the thing. It's not. So it's a, the, the lie yeah. is not necessary because the truth right. is bad enough. We have videos up there like the truth about guns, the yeah. truth about, we have multiple videos that have the words yeah. the a truth lot. in them. Yeah. And not all of them have been demonetized. Right. So yeah. is it true that ta uh, conservative videos have been unfairly targeted? Absolutely. Have we seen a disproportionate amount of de demonetization? Yes. But you don't need to lie and say, hey, I heard that any video that even has truth in the title is demonetized. Yeah. It's not accurate. And it doesn't help the legal cases right. going forward. This is something you need to understand. There's bitching on social media, and then there's actually taking taking legal matters into your own hands and taking the proper steps and using the avenues that are available to you. So just all, my only point is, if you don't know, don't lie, because then you toss the lies in with all the truth. All right, but these are the seven plus one yes. big tech <laughs> legal awesome. dramas, uh, oh, the, which really shouldn't be, they were missed. Hmm. It's almost like big oh. techs run about, out of ideas at the DMT they sex have. parties. Yeah. Uh, number seven, <laughs> to copyright a mockingbird. Yeah, that's that almost. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good use of an attorney's time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, number nice. six. This is no surprise. You're my, your favorite. My cousin Dorsey. Yeah, that's oh, number that's six. <laughs> Seven <laughs> plus one big legal dramas. I want to hear Pentelis read one. Give us uh, number five, Pentelis. Number five is a few good men hating Facebook engineers. <laughs> <laughs> We have the best bigger. Photoshop team, and I've yeah. seen Stephen Colbert's photoshops and Bill Mars. They're better. just absolutely terrible. Yeah. We trash. really have great people, this even is, Brendan. This is better. Um, <laughs> even Brendan. <laughs> I'll say this one because I'm already guilty of the hate speech. Number four, and justice for all tranny makeup tutorials. Yeah, oh. I don't. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I look good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's have uh, Bill. Awesome. Can you do number three? Can you read it? Absolutely. Anatomy of a bullshit claim. There you go. Oh, oh look at that. That's a legal term. That is. That's a. Uh, <laughs> it's not a very iconic poster. That no. one. Uh, no. Number two, inherit the windbags. Yeah. For those who don't know, that was that was the, uh, the poster, infamous mo yeah. monkey. Trunk. <laughs> um, well, the actual monkey trial. People are, you know, yeah. it was the, tr the evolution right. trial. Yeah. No one talks about how back then just a lot of the evolutionary theory was incredibly racist. They just gloss over uh, it. Yeah. Like, hold on a second, hold on a second. You want, accuse the, you want to accuse the don't talk about conservative it. Christians of being like, do you know what some of you you believe there? <laughs> eh, we don't want to. We don't want to. Like we, we can't even. Uh, hey, why don't you hit us uh, number two there, Pentelis? All right, right. Number two, an uncivil half Asian. Yes, an uncivil half Asian. Uh, oh, there he is. Look at the chin. Yeah, very, look at serious. very serious. Uh, a career here. I do not By the look way, that good. we have a major conspiracy episode coming up, and it is about the graphic designer for all early 90s through early 2000 John Travolta's films. Very serious. Uh, oh, John Travolta yes. films. I'm pretty sure it was the same person. I'm not saying Illuminati, but <laughs> number two, can't forget number two, uh, legally half Asian. Yeah, not, not so much a drama. Uh, <laughs> I look good. <laughs> I look how amused. I don't know if I should be concerned that my legal representation is as amused as the part-time <laughs> right. Greek Montreal. We both have good taste in humor. Yeah. Uh, number one, uh, top big tech legal dramas is presumed guilty. 
Yeah. There you go. It's just a guilty similarity to Harrison Ford. And uh, the plus one this week, uh, plus one, top ten, uh, top seven, top uh, seven plus one, the plus one, the plus one. I keep yeah. saying the plus one, the plus one. The plus one, top big tech legal <laughs> dramas. Aladdin. There you go. There that you has go. been this week's mm. seven plus one. A whole new world. You forgot the fun in the chamber. Well, thank you. Oh. What the hell? You are you? forgot the fun in the chamber. Again. Oh, Nine. Perfect time. Jeez. Does, this, does that? Did you hit it twice? It just this, played itself again. Are we? Is this? Is this? Is this the show? I think this is. Do what I have I a tricast? Yes. Do I have a tricast with Parkinson's? Oh, like sixteen bullets. <laughs> Pretty common. It's just a stutter. Just a stutter. You're, you're also very bad. Oh, that, wait. Eight, eight, yeah, sixteen. You're right. That's right. Seven plus one. I was thinking six plus one. Because I was thinking of the Walter PPK, eight. the PPKS is 7 plus 1. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you were doing all, all right, that. Well, thank you. No, I wasn't really doing the math. Again, I've been having to do legal crap all week. Uh, we are going to keep you up. So if we were to, let's say, file a suit, would we be able to let uh, people viewing right now uh, know by sometime next week? Yeah, we, we definitely will. I mean, look, there's a, there's a lot of work that we put in, um, not just on the legal team, but working with you and your team to make sure that everything that we're doing, we're verifying it, we're checking against the legal structure, we're looking about what the, the natural consequences are, and also weighing it against the fact that it's going to take time away from content and away right. from the audience. So yeah. that's why we have to, to go out, do the right thing, um, both to the audience and, and from a legal standpoint, also being that, you know, th this isn't just about you. It's it's about you and everyone else. I mean, there have been times where both the left and the right have stood up and said, what are these social media companies doing with their shadow banning and their ridiculous rules and their subjective application of them? Um, here, again, though, uh, consistently, 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 this only one name between Gizmodo and James O'Keefe's investigation is Steven Crowder. And, and uh, so... It gives us more of a leg to stand on so that we can hopefully pave the way for the rest of you. Because I don't want to do this for the rest of my life, and I'm hoping for someone else to come. I want to see other conservative channels out there. I want to see more. I want to see you guys grow. And uh, to do that, listen, it's a multi-tiered approach. Join up at, uh, at Mug Club. You help us fight this battle. You help us have not only Bill Richmond, but hopefully, I don't know, clerks. Are they clerks? We are, <laughs> the associates. I shut the, the associates. associates. I shut the clerk. I shut the clerk, uh, <laughs> clerks, and more on the legal team. And listen, let me nice. know if here's one thing. A lot of people go sue Charles Hermy, sue Twitter, sue. Well, it's at some point that does mean that there are going to be some days, some weeks, if we're in court or I have to take the stand, where you're going to miss out in the show. And and that's a part of what Mug Club is. And I, I want to make sure that if we go down this road, that you understand the magnitude of it, that you understand the severity of it, that you understand we are doing it for you. And so I want to know if if you're willing to sacrifice some content in the short term for us to be free from the shackles of corporate censorship long term. Half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond, I look forward to the updates. Thank you very much. Yes. Pentelis Com. Go subscribe to him on YouTube. He's one of the funniest men I know. Amen. Uh, break, and we'll be right back with the close. Hey, Mug Club members. <laughs> um... There's a lot of crime going on in Mexico, and the drug cartels are sort of infiltrating the suburbs, and MS-13 is all over Long Island, you know, with Oxycontin. Um, if you want to help, just stick with uh, calling the police and stuff like that. I don't recommend actually getting involved in sort of, you know, citizens' arrests and, and sort of like, what are you guys doing there? And I'm going to tell the cops and that. Uh, that doesn't turn out great. <laughs> It's a heartbreaking sight. A cold, hungry, half-Asian lawyer with no one to sue. For only 27 cents a day, you can ensure a steady, nutritious diet of big tech shadow banners and corporate hypocrites to a hungry, half-Asian lawyer. Feed half-Asian lawyer Bill Richmond. Join Mug Club today. Hello, Lada with Crowder viewers. Hoppa here. Don't forget that you can listen to the, the podcast on the go on iTunes and the SoundCloud. Uh, in the audio, you can download it and you can listen at your leisure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to be clear here that I wasn't joking. 
Like there's people you don't like. Oh, Trump's a Nazi and I hate these proud boys and these patriots. Ah, yell at them. Sure, do that. But then when they're actual gangsters or actual criminals, maybe take a step back. Yeah, let them sort of uh, mind their own business and you should probably mind yours. <laughs> And that picture wasn't me. someone who's drowning trying to do a lat flare pose but then gets taken away by the mm. current but he's so narcissistic that he still keeps going i gotta squeeze i gotta flex yeah. i gotta do the lat flare all kinds of lat all flares. kinds of lat all flares. kinds <laughs> of lat flares have you seen how conservative the hodge twins by the way are oh yeah Instagram lately yeah they're just Extreme. going they've gone full bore so far thank you so much to my half hidden lawyer bill richmond we will keep you updated yeah. and let us know which sins you think are most egregious here it has nothing to do with the power of the mob We've just, we filed for motions for information before in the past. We've tried to play nicely. We've settled out of court. It's gotten to the point where it's really impeded our ability to make a living. And thank you so much to Penn Tell Comedy. Please go yeah, subscribe yeah. to his YouTube channel. He does a podcast with Mike Ward, by the way. Yes, on he does. Community Network. It's fun. Um, so something I do want to talk, and I've talked about this before, but I think it's more relevant than ever, is this mantra that I hear a lot, and I think it's incredible. I hate to use the word toxic now. These terms have been co-opted, but it really is toxic. The idea that failure is not an option. You hear that a lot. Failure is not an option. Um, well, right now, this is an example. We're talking about this. We're fighting Facebook, Disney, ABC, the Academy. I don't even know if they are Disney, ABC. Uh, internal battles. Of course, we have battles with, well-known battles with YouTube. This has been going on for a long time, and it is I want to say sometimes it feels insurmountable, uh, and I'll come back to this. Sometimes, of course, I want to pack up and go home. Uh, it has been a very, very trying week, and as you know, you know, Hopper has been sick. He's been doing very well. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, I'm not at the top of my health game right now, but let me just tell you something. Um, failure is absolutely an option. I know that. I've talked about this a lot, but I'd like to put a finer point on it. Um, a good example, recently I was watching television. And I saw a commercial that mentioned uh, Huntsville, Alabama, you know, Rocket City, USA. And the man in the commercial was talking about how failure, failure was not an option. Now, here's the thing. I understand where he's coming from. I'm not saying that rocket scientists, NASA, whoever this guy was, is being dishonest. He's effectively trying to express the importance of the task and the severity of the failure they're in. Okay, someone could die. Something could blow up. I appreciate the accountability being expressed in the sentiment. So do not get mad. Don't say you're attacking NASA. That's not what I'm doing here. But I disagree with the phrase. And I think it's one we need to do away with. I certainly would encourage you to do away with it in your personal life. Mainly because I see so many people use it as a personal mantra. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. Kind of like an I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. But I've talked about this before. My good friend Chael has talked about this before. Failure is always an option. In fact, it's often the easiest and most readily available option. That doesn't mean that the consequences are easy or desirable. But the action of failing is always there every step of the way. It's more apparent to me now than ever. As we talk about on this show, your guiding light above all else, I hate this sounds cheesy, but it needs to be truth. And so I don't think that ever denying reality is the most productive route. I just don't believe it. I know that it's been helpful uh, for me, and I think it would behoove many of you to consider dropping the mindset for a more accurate one. Failure is always an option. Don't tell yourself it's not. If you tell yourself it's not, you're effectively denying this huge, this ribbon, this milky way, this, this cosmic belt of reality. Sometimes it's the biggest cosmic belt of reality in your path. Certainly the most looming. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're driving down a freeway. There's a major roadblock. Let's say a five car pileup. Does it help you to say there's no pileup? It's not even on the table. Or is it more productive to see the pileup, to acknowledge it, and to refuse to allow it to impede your progress? See, the former mindset, that of telling yourself that there is no roadblock, failure's not an option, leads to what? What does it lead to? riding straight into that roadblock. The latter, acknowledging it, seeing the roadblock, including this data, incorporating the information into your reality, largely because it is reality, I'll come back to that in a second, living your truth, uh, 
would be more productive. It would lead to a solution. You know it's there, but you don't want to end up in that roadblock. So you're more likely to take a different route, to recalibrate, to succeed. Why do we tell ourselves this, that failure is not an option? Why do we consistently lie to ourselves? And why has it been accepted as though it's, and I see it in the Christian community as well as this sort of self-help guru community. Which is more productive? Okay, let's just look at this from a pragmatic point of view. The, the failure is not an option mantra. Or let's just say, let's, we switched it to failure is disallowable. I'd like to see more people saying failure is disallowable as opposed to lying to themselves saying that failure is not an option. It may sound trivial, but one is a soundbite and one is a way of life. One is a mantra, okay, that sounds good on daytime talk shows, it sells self-help books. The other is a very non-sexy but necessary mindset to deal with your own shortcomings. Most importantly, one is dishonest and one is truthful. I'd say it's honestly, it's even more severe than, uh, than that in that one is dishonest in arguably the most destructive way possible and that it's the kind of dishonesty in which you lie to yourself. Oh, in your marriage, failure's not an option. Failure's not an option. In your work, failure's not an option. Failure's not an option. In your physical training, failure's not an option. Failure's not an option. Only to find yourself at some point when you've been living with this mantra, I don't know, with a broken marriage possibly a divorce, losing your job, or in the most literal sense, physical harm, finding yourself under a barbell. By the way, I, I don't know what's happened with my wrist. It's not the power glove with, uh, with the boy from Boy Meets World, the brother, the old Fred Wizard. Savage. Wizard. That's what it is. It's so bad. And by the way, that's why I believe that physical training is so important. A lot of people say, oh, you're a meathead. No. Uh, sometimes experiencing the most literal strain possible tells you a lot about yourself a lot about your place in this world and how you interact with it. So do me a favor. We do this every week, and often you, you, you tweet me or you send me messages, and it ends up on uh, the Mug Club Life Advice segment. Do me a favor. Run this experiment. Find out what your maximal strength is. It, how much you can squat, deadlift, how I, I don't care, how many pull-ups you can do, okay? This is just an experiment. I'm not saying that how many pull-ups you can do determines your marital quality. But just find something that measures your maximal strength. Write it down, okay? Perform it once. Now, I want you to add 15%. Doesn't seem like a ton, right? Tell yourself failure is not an option. Repeat it as many times as necessary. Listen to, your, listen to your amp up music, get Slayer going. I don't know what you listen to nowadays. I don't know if Linkin Park is still a thing. That's what pissed me <laughs> off in high school. Get yourself to peak by any means possible and try it. Pause this right now, try it, add 15%. Did you succeed? See, that's why the mantra of failure is not an option is so harmful. Because amidst all of this lying to yourself, all the while these roadblocks keep piling up. You will come to that roadblock. You will come to that pileup. It's there. It's always there. But if you acknowledge it, if you're honest with yourself, you can prepare for it. And you can choose, not always, but often to disallow failure. So I want you to take that same experiment, okay? Find out your maximal strength, same as before. Could be a squat, could be even a number of pull-ups. It just has to be consistent with what you did before, okay? Now, instead of performing it and then adding 15% and amping yourself up with failure is not an option, I want you to take a different tack. I want you to acknowledge that that is your limitation, that going past it will lead to failure. Keep that in the back of your mind, okay? But don't reach it. Don't max out. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to not perform to failure, but to chart a course to improve it. For example, let's say your max, maximum squat is 300 pounds. Consistently do less. Call it 275 pounds. But gradually add, every time you go into the gym, five pounds. Work hard, work hard, work diligently, but not to failure. If you can do 15 pull-ups, only do 12 or 13. But consistently, and add one rep. Write it down. And then, I want you to come back and note when you surpass your previous limit. I guarantee you, this is a promise, okay? Not an empty promise. I guarantee you that using that method, you will surpass it. And you'll probably be surprised by how quickly it happens. Now, this experiment here, it's not about lifting weights. It's to show you that one way of doing things, the failure is not an option, doesn't work. You can try and move that weight, shove and heave and strain all you want. You will be no closer, 0% closer to achieving growth than you were when you started. The other, while not sexy, very workmanlike, it's not a show horse, it's a Clydesdale, will lead to breakthrough. The breakthrough you were seeking in the first place. It's a great irony in life that these triumphant, these grandiose ways that we try to achieve our breakthroughs, they're usually the ones that keep us from achieving them. Because it's the preparation that matters. It's the in-betweens, like I've talked about. It's the unsexy measures we take when no one is watching. When the excitement's worn off and failure is always an option in the back of our mind. See, one, the failure is not an option is effectively uh, 
the false mantra of living your truth. That's why I think I hate it so much. Whereas the decision to acknowledge failure as an option, but disallowing it to determine your long-term circumstances is the equivalent to living in the truth. I don't think there's anything sillier than saying this, I'm speaking my truth. That's a hedge to say, you could be a f liar. That's what you could be saying. Sorry, Carter Blackguard has to hit the, the censor button. I'm a little pissed off this week. I don't really care. I've let it fly. I'll, I'll reset. I'll recalibrate next week because I realize failure with my vocabulary is an option. But what does living your truth mean? If you're not living in the truth, there is absolute truth. And sometimes your truth and the truth are incongruent. As a matter of fact, I'd wager more often than not because often the truth is really uncomfortable. But guess what? The truth is always there. It's always there. And if your truth isn't the truth, it's going to hit you like a brick in the face. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. Sooner or later, the truth is coming from you. I say from you or for you, I don't care. Live life without limits. That's another bumper sticker that I saw. I'm trying to go on, go on off course. <laughs> Live life without limits. Someone has this, this bumper sticker showing like they were climbing on a summit. What the hell does that mean? What does that mean? The truth is you have limits. I'm a rock. No, you're a human and you're breakable. We all are. Or people lie to themselves when they're sick. How many times do you know these people, the positive speaking bullcrap? I understand you don't want to be a negative Nancy, but you know, they, no, <laughs> I'm not sick. I don't get sick. I'm gonna speak over myself, I'm not sick, and they cough up a lung. Listen, you can't lift that weight. At some point in your life, you're going to die. You are sick. Your marriage has problems. You're dropping the ball at certain aspects of your job or as a father or as a husband. You've made promises to yourself that you haven't kept. That's reality. And to tell yourself that failure is not an option is to consistently live in a state of denying reality. It's delusional by definition. Right now, to give you an idea, to tie this back into us, and I don't want this to just be about me, we were hit with four copyright claims in the same day on the same show to try and suppress it. Three have been defeated. They're just biding their time on the fourth, hoping that the Oscars will no longer be relevant and that you don't watch it when it's available. Please prove them wrong. We're currently preparing for an epic legal war with Facebook. One that will test the integrity and fortitude, not only of myself, but everyone on this team. Also you. How long will you stick it out? How long will you support us? This week, we had to miss three shows to fight these battles. Believe me, that wasn't fun for us. There are going to be a few more weeks like that if this goes to court. How long are you in? When the dust has settled, the excitement of the initial war, the battle cry has died out. When we're in the trenches, rained on, covered in dirt, waiting, are you still there? Because failure is always an option. I have to be honest with myself. Right now, failure is the most easy, readily available option. I'm not a rock. I'm not a man without limits. I'm a very limited man who is fallible and breakable. It'd be a lot easier to fail right now because rather than continuing, rather than reinvesting and creating for the unheard majority of Americans, you, the international fans out there, know we have a lot of Canadian Greek Orthodox, Pantelis just ta told me this, uh, I could collect my marbles that I've gained thus far right now and go home. Even more, I'm at a point right now where I know that, the f that failure of this program, of this movement, of your movement right now is a, a much more easy option today than it will be once we're in this fight. Because once we're in this fight, we can't unring that bell. Unless we win, I can't recoup all the resources, finances, creative energy, and just life energy that's been invested into it. Failure is a much more easy option for me to choose today than it would be tomorrow or the next day or the next, and I know that, and I struggle with it. I could lie to you, I struggle with it all the time. There are times where I come really close to calling it and packing it in. To deny that, to lie to myself, and, and to lie to you about it for the sake of an inner, some kind of inspirational soundbite would not only be dishonest, it would cloud my judgment to the decisions that I have to make for all of us moving forward. It would also belittle, by the way, the magnitude of what you've done for me. You, the listener, the viewer, for us. The truth is that you've helped us build something so impactful, so important to such a multitude of people that the walls are closing in, tempting us by providing the option of failure. That's where we are right now. Failure is a, would be a relief. Failure is an option, I'm not gonna lie to you. I go a step further and say not only an option, it's a very possible outcome. That's why it's at the front of my mind. I want it to be at the front of yours. Because then we're all on the same page knowing that right now, at this moment in history, we all have a decision to make. We can choose failure right now. We can choose easy right now. And it's available. It's right there. We can choose relief. We can choose peace through failure right now. Or we can choose to go through the hard door. 
And this may not be as inspirational. It may not sell as many books, but I can promise you this. So long as you, all of you watching, listening, streaming, choose to go through those hard doorways, those thresholds, meaning many, doorway after doorway after doorway, so long as you keep choosing to do that with us, I promise you, so will I. You tell me, are you in? Comment, let me know. If you're in, I am. To the rest of you, fill your hands, you son of a For everyone else, there's Mug Club. See you next week. Hopefully more shows.